Hello guys, I'm a big fan of practical learning and today let's help practically one person on Laracast forum to group the data how they want. And I have already answered that on the topic, so here's my answer, but I would explain that in this video because it touches broader topic of grouping data in Eloquent and this is one of the most common questions I see on Laracast forum or on Stack Overflow. People are struggling to group the data from Eloquent in Eloquent language in most effective way. So this is an example question. We click that link and we see this. So this is the table, database table of that person. And this is the output that they want to get. And it's not that easy because grouping should be by month from dates and grouping also by A or B, which is some kind of code, company code probably. And I have recreated the same database locally and successfully reproduced that situation in this local project. And in this video, I will show you how it's not one SQL query or one query of Eloquent. It's a bit more complex. And I want to explain the thinking process behind that grouping because quite often it's overwhelming. Where do you start? How do you group? How do you present the data and all of that? And another kind of a disclaimer, notice my way of doing things is only one way of doing that. Because when it comes to grouping, there are a lot of different ways to achieve the same thing. Grouping in MySQL, grouping in collections, grouping in arrays, grouping in blade, whatever you want. You just have to decide what is more important to you, the performance or readability of the code or flexibility to extend that report and stuff like that. So there's no one answer. I will just show you my way of how I solved this particular problem. And first, how I would start thinking about that is from the end goal in mind. So what is the output? What is the visual stuff? What is the view and what should be the structure of that table? So this is kind of a controversial idea. Maybe not all of you would do that, but I would start with the blade. So I've already prepared that blade and I will show you now. So you need a table, right? And how should you structure that table? You should think about that. So looking here, for example, there will be months, right? So there should be array of months. So for each of months, there will be some data. And then there should be for each of company codes. So A and B should be another array. So we need two arrays and probably the whole report. So these numbers will be inside of that multidimensional array. So it should be report, months and job codes or company codes. And then every element of that array should have the amount of jobs and the count of jobs. It's a misleading title, but the amount is the sum of invoice amount. So money and count is the amount of invoices. So while drawing that blade table, we have this. For each of the codes, we will have a separate array of all the codes, which is A and B in this case, but there may be like C, D, E and stuff like that. So we're doing for each of the codes, we are listing job amount columns and then do it again, but then listing job count columns. So now we have a task from blade to our report controller or report service, how to structure the data. So we need job company codes. And then we're kind of building that table by assuming that we already have that report. So every report row will be a month and inside of that month there will be some kind of value. And then for every row we show that month, potentially reformatting that in the way we want. And then again for each of the job codes we are showing the data from that multidimensional array that I've mentioned. So report, month and job company code. And inside of each element, there's amount or count. In fact, both amount and count. And if for some reason it's empty, we are fall back into zero. So by starting with blade, you come up with some kind of structure already for your variable of report. And now let's go to controller to construct that report. As I mentioned, it's not the only way of doing that. And it's a personal preference in a lot of ways. But this is my way, how I came up with things. So there are three steps in populating that report. First step is SQL query and our goal is to have as few queries as possible. So in theory, database grouping is the fastest way to do that. Instead of doing that in PHP, you can offload quite a lot of things into MySQL. And for that, you need to know some of the MySQL functions, like in this example, date format. And to perform that one first, I go to MySQL directly. So if we open MySQL probe, this is the database table. And this is the query that I've written. So again, going back to the thinking process, first visual blade, then we go to controller what variables we need. But to construct that variable, we need to first launch SQL query, see what data we receive, and then transform that into PHP and Laravel. 
So this is what I've done first. And now I see, okay, June company code A, 210. And in our case, we have the result from the user, from the original task. So it should be 110 for June, which it is, and two, which it is, job count A is two and 110. And for B, there's nothing in June. So first I construct this query and then I transform that into Eloquent like this. Again, there are multiple ways to construct that in Eloquent or in Query Builder or even Raw Query. That's your personal preference. But this is not the final result. First, I'm getting all the cards grouped by month and by code, but this is not the final array. What I'm doing next is two things. From the same cards, which is Eloquent Collection, we will need two things. We will extract the actual report and also separately extract the company codes. So in general, my personal preference of reporting is load stuff in the database as much as possible. And then if we need multiple data structures from the same report, then Eloquent Collections help a lot. So in my case, from the same cards, I'm doing each and then forming the actual array. And then also from the original cards, I'm doing plug for only company codes, sorting by them. So it wouldn't be B, A, it would be A, B sorted and then only unique. So it wouldn't be repeated. So this result of that is array of A and B. A few details to mention here to explain. First, I'm initializing the report array empty because otherwise this will fail on the first assignment because it wouldn't find the report. Next, this symbol is important because use dollar $report is actually modifying the original variable. So this syntax is doing that. Without this, it wouldn't work. So we need to return that changed report from this each function. And final thing, we are grouping by year and month and ordering by that. So June should come before July and before August. And that's why we are grouping by numbers and only in Blade we are formatting that to actual month name like June and July in English. So that F symbol is formatting with carbon the actual month. And it all looks pretty complicated. It actually took an hour for me to accomplish that. And as I said, it's one way of doing that. This is my overall feeling usually. It's what can I do in SQL, then how can I group the data in collections, and what other variables can I take from the original SQL result, again with collections or with arrays, to have additional extra data for the report. But grouping, the first grouping should happen on the query because then the rest of it, that each and that plug comes from much smaller chunk of data. So instead of working with hundreds of rows, these two work only with grouped data by month. So performance wise, MySQL is doing the most of the job, which it should be in most cases. And things like reformatting some variable could be easily done in Blade because it's about viewing the data, not grouping the data anymore. So this is the example. What do you think? It's a pretty controversial video, actually. You may find a better way to achieve that, and you can suggest that in the comments. And this would be a proof that by shooting these videos, I'm not the best at everything. I'm trying to teach you what I know, what I've built in practice, but I'm not perfect. And that's why YouTube comments are really important. And often I suggest people to read the comments along the video because you guys often suggest better ways or different ways or ask additional questions to achieve the same result. And if you want to learn more about Eloquent in general, grouping and other stuff, I have a separate course pretty old one, but it's the most popular one on my teachable platform. Because Eloquent, as I said, is the most common question on Laracast and Stack Overflow, how to deal with something in Eloquent. So there's four hours of videos. You may be interested to learn more about Eloquent and a lot of practical knowledge is here. Not just theory, not just reading the docs or anything. A lot of examples, including some packages. So check out the course and meanwhile, see you in other videos here on YouTube.